Martin and John from Streetly Electronics are friends of ours and they're just a right laugh. So we don't need any excuse at all to go and see them. So with the Bright Sparks thing, it was the perfect opportunity for us to sit down with particularly John Bradley, who's you know related to the originator of the Mellotron. And uh, every time we go there, he, he's found some other little nugget of information about the history that we kind of constantly piecing things together. So yeah, for us, uh, it was a no-brainer. But also, if you think we're obsessive about the Mellotron, Jared from iMonster is doubly obsessive. Uh, and that was brilliant because actually in Bright Sparks, that gives him the opportunity to kind of let rip and let rip he did. Peter Zinoviev's place in electronic music history is absolutely assured. Really fascinating character. And it transpires that he lived in Cambridge or lives in Cambridge. Uh, and the Underworld studio is not far from there. So I, can't, I was kind of like, we could kill two birds with one stone here. We could go to Peter, interview him. And then I could take the Chamberlain rhythm mate amp drum machine thing down to Carl and Carl could put his guitar through it and talk about, you know, how, what, how he feels about it. Uh, and that was really fascinating. In fact, we drove up to Peter's. It was a really scorching hot day. And I'm, I've am i got a very old 1972 Citroen DS. And uh, I thought, this is perfect opportunity because actually EMS used to use a DS um, Safari, they called it. It was like the estate version as their company car for lugging all their gear around. So I was like, yeah, we'll drive up and we'll take this up and it'll be a nice surprise for Peter and we'll take him and his wife around the block in it a couple of times. I hadn't used the car for a while and uh, unfortunately the mice had got into some of the cooling ducts and kind of chewed away the internal foam. And we're on the motorway and Chris, my partner, said, uh, it's a bit hot in here. Have you got any air con? I'm like, get it out of here. You know, it's a 1972 car, for God's sake. Just open the vent. And of course he did that, whereupon the entire car was just filled with black foam as we're driving up the motorway. Honestly, as a wind-up, it couldn't have been better if only I'd have planned it. EMS. Electronic Dream Plant. Adrian Wagner, Chris Huggett. Now, Chris's story has been told a few times, particularly as he was responsible for like the Akai uh, S1000 stuff, uh, pretty much everything that Novation has done. And Chris is an absolute legend. Adrian had always been very quiet after the demise of EDP. Uh, and in fact, I'd only spoken to him because a million years ago, Chris and I did this little fat boy MIDI controller. And we deliberately did the livery in black and yellow as a kind of homage to the Wasp and the EDP kind of line. Uh, and Adrian obviously thought the same because he called me up one day and asked me whether that was the case. And I was like, yeah, yeah. And we had this amazing two hour conversation. So for Bright Sparks, I was like, it would be brilliant to get Adrian to tell his story because, you know, we know Chris's story. And that's been told a few times. Uh, so I called Adrian and it was sad, really, because he wasn't well. He was in a wheelchair uh, and he just said, I don't want this to be how people remember me. Uh, and you have to respect that. But what he did do is he put us in touch with one of his closest friends, which transpires it was a mutual friend, a guy called Fred Gardner. And Fred, myself, Chris McLeod, and another friend, Jeff Bolt, we regularly go out to lunch with Chris Huggett. And Chris and I are just like sponges as they're all talking about the old EDP days and what's happened to who and how this happened and how that came about and stuff like that. And it's a real privilege to be in that position. So for Fred to be able to talk with real enthusiasm, because obviously Fred's had kind of subsequent careers since outside the music industry. So he looks back on uh, uh, the EDP days as his real halcyon days. And I think that enthusiasm really comes across. So. Yeah, for me, that was a real coup. I am the wasp. I am the dirt in the ointment. I am the dip. I am the portable ointment. 
Ken Freeman. So a million years ago, when Chris and me were kids, there was a big hit called Gonna Make You a Star by David Essex, and it had this synth line in it that was a total earworm. And even as a, it, as a kid, it fascinated me because it was like, what is the instrument that makes that noise? And then when Chris and I kind of got together work-wise, it transpired he wanted to know the same thing and we're so nerdy about these things we were like well you know was it ken's prototype string machine that he used in war of the worlds we knew that ken had played on the track was it a prototype cs80 no it can't have been because it was too early what was it what was it so we were lucky enough to get a hold of ken and ken came and talked us through the entire you know how he created the first string machine which was really about listening to records and trying to use his engineering expertise to capture the sound that he heard on those vinyl records. And that in itself was fascinating. And Kent, you know, is a proper musical icon, tripods, Holby City. His PRS is something else, man. And then, so we do the interview and then right at the end of it, you know, Chris and I know which question we're going to ask him, which was, so what did you use on Gonna Make You A Star then? And he kind of rolled his eyes and said, what, do you really want to know? Yeah, 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 we've been waiting decades for this. Oh, it was an ARP 2600. No. Mm. In double tracked, I mean treble tracked. You got one, this one, yeah, it's right. No. Um, when we went on tour, we used uh, an Odyssey. I played it in, in wow. yeah, we just uh, triple tracked it. We've been desperate to know what made that sound since about 1975. Oh, well, that's, <laughs> that's a <we're> oblige. <laughs> 